it is July 2012. And I'm sitting in the NASA Ames Research Center in Mountain View, California, and listening how technology will change the lives of a billion people. Getting into Singularity University has been the most intellectually stimulating experience of my life, and my little gray brain cells are enjoying every minute of it. I have just finished my morning run and passed Google Campus a few miles away. And just like every, mo every other morning, the smell of their morning pastries has followed me back all through the running track. And I ask myself, why is change happening here? Why aren't Google and other gigantic powerhouses emerging from anywhere else on the planet? I mean, it wasn't like people in Silicon Valley suddenly woke up and were smarter than anywhere else on the planet. I realized that the answer is knowledgeable people who are drawn to this location. So I asked myself, what if we take those knowledgeable people to the places lacking that knowledge and expertise? Couldn't that be the start of an actual change? Even Google was built by human beings, so potentially by distributing knowledgeable people, we could build Silicon Valley's anywhere in the world. In 2014, I started to work on that idea. And thus, Geobatical, with a mission to distribute knowledge and know-how to the far-flung cities of the world, was born. Three years later, we are connecting talent from all over the world to organizations in 49 countries. But when we are talking about the knowledge distribution, let's look at what is happening in the countries. Where should the knowledge be distributed? Last year, Manpower Research reported that number one country for most difficult country to fill jobs was Japan. 86% of employers are saying they have difficulty filling jobs and things are not getting better for Japan. By 2030, every third person in this, in this country will be over 65 years old. Within the next 50 years, this country will lose one third of its population and most of the people who remain will be elderly. So this is the competition that each and every one of us building our respective teams in our corners of the world have to face. And funnily enough, we look at the last country in the list, which is China, just a few weeks ago announced how they have to open up their immigration in order to attract global talent. But what's going on in the Nordics? As we see with the growth of Slush, there have been more and more amazing companies emerging from the Nordics, but that also has increased the stress level in the labor market. And that's probably why last year Sweden has already outpaced the United States with the highest labor market uh, stress level, which means the mismatch of the skills and the actual needs. And what's going on in Finland? Now you're thinking about all the software engineering hiring ca campaigns that your teams are running and wondering, why aren't we getting good candidates? Well, Finland already today is lacking 7,000 software developers, according to Tivia. This all was quite sad numbers, but there's actually good news as well. And the good news is that people are moving more than ever. According to William Swing, the Director General of International Organization for Migration, every seventh person on the planet is a migrant today. We are living in the era of highest human mobility in the recorded history. Let's think of why this is happening. And there's actually a simple structure in our lives that we can take a look at, which has changed. So let's look at friendship. friendship once almost exclusively formed around our neighborhood, have suddenly expanded thanks to global networks. Suddenly, instead of being connected because of our location, we are connected in the verticals of interest. My best friend can be sitting in India, Australia, or the United States, and we are connected through our mutual interest. Our comfort zones have expanded globally because our people are everywhere and we are more comfortable to be anywhere. 
The world has become more fluid. But let's look at where do the highly skilled migrants come from. And there has been an interesting change happening there as well. In, according to World Bank, in 2000, number one source for highly skilled migrants was the UK, whereas in 2010, top three was India, Philippines, and China. But even more important from the fact where do they come from is where the talent will actually move. Because where the talent will move will affect the success and the failures of economies. On Shabbatical, we see interesting trajectories and where people actually want to move. And top three of our talent sources, so on the left you see where talent com comes from, on, on the right you see where they are, where they want to move. India, United States and Brazil are our top three in terms of where the talent is coming from. And not surprisingly, India being number one, this is a country where, now think back about the 7,000 7, developers that Finland doesn't have today. India produces every year 1.5 million engineers come out from school in India, which is more than United States and China altogether. So this is a great source of talent. But on the other side, you have some countries which are more obvious than others. Obviously, being a founder from Estonia, Estonia is ranking very well, but not only because we are from Estonia, but because this is a country which has really worked hard in, in terms of building a great user experience. Just as an example, it takes 24 hours in Estonia to get a work permit. Setting up in a company is, takes 10 minutes. So I think one of the important things that our countries and our cities have to start thinking about while helping to build the tech hubs is really to think about what is the user experience of the country, of the community, and of the onboarding of the talent. But besides the countries, one of the things that we have learned now working three years with organizations across so many different countries, if I would have got or every time somebody tells me that we are hiring culture fit, if I would have got five cents each time, I would be a millionaire just from out of that. And so one thing that we have learned is that besides the country and besides the talent, to take the, those two together, we need to also open the comfort zone of the CEOs, of the founders, and of the hiring managers. So in a way, if you think about hiring, then we are tempted to hire the people we are most comfortable with. But are we hiring the people who are best for our companies or the ones that are more comfortable hiring? So what, what we would like to challenge is that it is the culture ad. It is like, if you think about an individual life, if you are an individual, a 25-year-old who says that from now on, I will only experience the things that I have done. I will not learn anything new. I will just stand still, just everything I have done. In a way, hiring culture fit is just that. You are hiring the people who are similar to the people that you already have. So, but opening up a hiring culture ad is the one that actually brings up the ideas. On each and every stage here, we are talking about Silicon Valley. But if you think about Silicon Valley, what makes Silicon Valley great is that it is culturally a diverse uh, area. 74% of computer science workers between 25 and 44 are foreign born. It is the diversity that actually helps to make those companies great. And enabling that will help us as well. We have had the privilege to work with many amazing teams, but some of them I would like to point out. Estonian e-residency team. So it is a state organization, a state startup. And starting a state governmental agency, would the, the, the kind of easy choice would have been to build a local team with local people. Instead, this team chose the opposite. And what that actually meant is that today in the e-residency team, they have people like the, um, the previously CEO and co-founder of 500 Pixels, which is helping to build Estonia as a country. Or Arnaud, who was the previously the communication advisor for the French president. 
So suddenly, a tiny country with a limited source of talent, by opening up their minds to the global level, has, has really managed to build a rock star team. Or some great companies from your neighborhood here, um, musician, over 70 people, 20 nationalities, all here in Helsinki. Or one of my favorites as well, Mind Valley, a Malaysian tech education technology company who today has 150 people from 45 nationalities building their company in Malaysia. So I myself am a leader of a team which today has over 30 people from 13 different countries. And if you have any questions, want to bounce ideas about how to build a culturally diverse team, I will be around. Let's have a chat. Thank you very much.